And on a day when we've seen a barrel of oil go above uh, uh, $100 uh, uh, on uh, the markets here in uh, Europe uh, and uh, edging closer of $200 a barrel over in New York. Uh, let's get a reaction from Salman Al-Ansari, founder and president of the Washington, D.C.-based Saudi American Public Relations Affairs Committee. Thanks for speaking with us here uh, on France 24. Merci beaucoup, François. S Salman, uh, the uh, crisis that uh, we're seeing unfold, the invasion of uh, Ukraine, uh, by Russia. First off, how's it being perceived where you are? Yeah, thank you so much and hi to all the viewers and to your honorable guests. Uh, I think it's definitely very concerning, with no doubt. Um, the kingdom has always been asking for diplomacy, for resolving issues, for de-escalations, for any conflict. Um, but uh, since the topic is tricky and very sensitive, I need to uh, have a disclaimer which is very well known already, that I do not speak on behalf of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, but rather as an independent Saudi researcher. And I assure you that the Kingdom is seriously concerned about this. People might think that oil producers around the world are kind of content with the rise of oil prices, but this is actually not uh, accurate. Yes, it is important for all the oil producers to have fair um, um, uh, kind of like prices for, for, for their commodities. But at the same time, this issue, to me, it kind of reminds me of the swamp that Saddam has put himself into when he invaded Kuwait. So I think, and I actually believe that uh, President Putin has made a very bloody mistake by, by, by invading Ukraine. But at the same time, to be absolutely honest, because there is actually an Arab proverb um, that uh, by Umar ibn al-Khattab that says, stick to honesty, stick to honesty, even if it kills you. But in my humble opinion, and to be fully honest, both Russia and the West share some kind of a responsibility of the current escalation that is primarily caused by not taking Minsk agreements seriously and for the constant provocations from both sides. And also Con constant due, due constant the provocations from both sides. Uh, what we're now look, looking ahead to is we're waiting for remarks from the U.S. President uh, Joe Biden. One of the measures he might announce is the release of a, a strategic reserve of oil and gas. And the United States is a producer of crude. Uh, but uh, will he then be, in your view, on the telephone uh, to the king or the crown prince to uh, uh, talk a little bit about whether or not uh, they too can uh, help out by pumping out more oil? Yeah, I think we have to put things into context. Last year, President Biden blamed the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia for the fossil fuel at the climate summit. And subsequently, Francois, one week later, he asked Riyadh to increase its oil production to lower the prices of oil. And it was a way to throw the blame on Saudi so he can cover up his primary responsibility for all his missteps after he knocked down the U.S. shale oil industry. So, so are, you up, Saudi, that, uh, are you saying that uh, the crown prince won't pick up the phone? It's not about picking up the phone. The U.S. will always remain as the most strategic ally, not only partner, to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. But at the same time, the current administration has made a lot of mistakes uh, against the custodian of the two holy mosques, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and the center of Islam, by calling it a pariah. So you call Saudi Arabia a pariah the moment you don't think you need it, and the moment you need Saudi Arabia, you call it a partner? Saudi Arabia doesn't like to play these games. So I think the United States, the, the, the ball is in the court of the United States to rectify the trajectory of its conception. And if and you see a gold-plated invitation to go to the White House, to the Crown Prince, uh, if he says, let's let bygones be bygones, let's forget about the, the Jamal Khashoggi uh, affair, uh, let's forget about Yemen for a little while, Let's uh, come on over to the White House. Uh, we're, all is forgiven or we're, we're, you are welcome. At that point in time, what will Saudi Arabia's view be towards Russia? I think it's not like that at all. People are, are thinking Saudi Arabia is somehow 
taking sides here and there. No, Saudi Arabia has the absolute sovereignty to uh, multiply its relationships and to strengthen its relationships with all the world powers and all nations. And let's not forget the fact that Saudi Arabia has been the trusted ally for the United States since uh, uh, the beginning and the inception of Saudi Arabia by being having the golden rule, which is oil for security, and by putting down the Soviet uh, Union, and also by uh, co countering terrorism. So Saudi Arabia is the golden key for the United States in the region, that's for sure. But putting the yeah, blame you, you, on- just, just, just to remind our viewers on that point, in the 1980s, uh, uh, the Saudis uh, helped keep the price of oil low. And uh, exactly. you could say that that's one of the reasons why the Soviet Union collapsed. So they were over-reliant uh, on oil and gas and, and at the all, time. Yeah. Could and a scenario also, like that happen again? Let's not forget also last year, or two years ago, at the beginning of the corona crisis, Riyadh used a shock tactic uh, uh, against Russia by increasing its production to the maximum to get Russia in line with OPEC plus previous agreements. Despite uh, being upset by the move, which is Moscow, Moscow was under pressure, but, uh, uh, but, but eventually followed suit. So Saudi Arabia doesn't want to use oil as a military kind of uh, uh, tactic, but to make sure that all OPEC members are following suit and working on stabilizing the energy market, Saudi Arabia can take real actions because it's the central bank of energy in the whole world. Sa Salman al Ansari, one final question for you. Um, of late, relations have been fairly good between uh, uh, Saudi Arabia and Russia. In fact, they call it what, OPEC plus, I think is the, the, the term that's used. Russia's been involved in... in, in uh, in, in, in talks with, a, it's had a seat at the table at, at OPEC. At this point in time, uh, which way would Saudi Arabia go? Will it, will it, uh, will, does, does invading Ukraine signal a divorce or not? I think uh, we should ask the question to the primary um, affected nations, such as the EU, for example. Will there be a divorce between Germany and Russia? Not at all. Even like the Minister of International Affairs of Germany himself said, Nord Stream 2 might be uh, excluded from the sanctions bundle. So I think the idea of divorce and marriage of convenience and sometimes to be their friends and sometimes to go and turn against them is not uh, uh, good in terms of strategic uh, relationships. Yes, indeed. And Saudi Arabia has been traditionally uh, having this firm position uh, of uh, being consistent uh, and being a voice of reason, which is conducive towards calm, avoiding escalation and resolving disputes through diplomacy and protecting citizens. But Saudi Arabia does not like to have fiery speeches on public, uh, but rather to have uh, discussions and dialogues with their uh, uh, partners in closed rooms. That's the traditional Saudi stance. Salman Al Ansari of uh, the uh, Saudi American Public Relations Affairs Committee. Thank you so much for speaking with us from Riyadh. Thank you so much.